All right, so I'm gonna do a walk around on the electric converted Ford 9N. So a couple unconventional things about this tractor, uh, that part. And then also I've converted a rear to a um, five ton military truck. That's actually where I get more questions about that online. So I just cut out the wheel. You might be able to see like that's 9N, that's 9N hub. And I just welded that to a set of military steel wheels I cut out. But the electric part's probably what you're interested in. So um, all this mess, these are battery modules. They're lithium out of Nissan Pathfinders in two different types. These are Rogue, these are Pathfinder. Same type of cells. So like these guys are the same in these and these, but uh, just different layout. And so these have 14 cells per module. And I got a weird voltage. So my motor controller is here. What's well, underneath that, that bit down there. And what it does is uh, it's 60 or 72 volts. And you actually need a higher voltage than that. So I didn't realize that when I originally got it. Uh, I thought I'd be right on par for 60 because these in 14 times uh, 3.7 is like, I think it's, uh, 58.8. No, that might be the max. I believe that's the max. So my, uh, guess was, okay, 60 volts is the max. I'll be under that. That's what I want. I didn't realize that motor controllers actually want, um, the, the, it'll be a much higher voltage than that. So this one, it senses if it's either 60 or 72. So, with the battery configuration that I had, it was going to be a no-go uh, because the voltage was too low. And the controller immediately said, no-go, we're just turning off and it's not going to work. So, um, just using what I had, I got the batteries for free. Uh, kind of a friend of a friend deal that owned a junkyard and they couldn't sell them and they couldn't throw them in the trash. So, uh, I took a couple pallets of them and um, charged them up. I use a uh, kind of like a Chinese, like one of those bird scooter uh, type deals. They sell uh, aftermarket generic chargers. So I got a 58.8 volt charger because that's how much the maximum amount of these, like 4.2 times 14, um, you know, that's what it should be. Each one of these cells, the low is 3.2 volts and the max is 4.2 volts. 3.7 is what people say lithium ion should be. And so it, that's the middle. Um, but when you're charging, you charge them to the full amount. So I charged up a couple of these things after I stripped them out of the uh, big, huge packs with like metal around them. They seem to hold charge great. Seem to have a ton of power, just kind of messing around with like motors on the floor, this motor. And um, went forward with it. So. Anyways, that was kind of a misstep on ordering the wrong size controller. And so what I did, just again, using what I had, I said, what if I took some of these and went from 14 cells to seven cells and then added those to 14 so that I actually had 21 in series and then I just kept the same amount. So that's what I wound up doing. So these um, down here, you can see there's two, four, six, eight that are 14S, like 14 in series. And then up here there's four, but I effectively cut these in half. And when I say I cut them in half, I did a very crude thing and I actually cut them in half. And then I used a rib nut in spots where there was not a factory connector. And uh, that's how I got to my, uh, 21s and the rationale there is um because this is only four modules but there's it's times two right so that's actually eight banks um the 14s and the 7s are actually going to have the same amount in parallel so um it's 21s 8p is what the technical term would be um so that's how i've done that uh, another kind of obvious problem you might see here, uh, one big problem I have with the Curtis is it heats up very quickly. Uh, there's not an external cooling port where you can like plumb water out like uh, the EVnetics like I'm familiar with. So on the 
uh, mill I just very crudely took a piece of uh, this is half inch and it was already the right I think it's like three and a half by seven or something and I just build it out kind of zigzag pattern uh, connected it up this is just a standard generic automatic transmission cooler and a little 12 volt PC pump like what would you see on like a high performance PC with the water cooling so that has proven to you know, improve the Curtis. I still wouldn't necessarily recommend the Curtis. In hindsight, I probably would have spent the money on a Evinetics Soliton Junior. And the right one pops up, I'm certainly gonna buy one. So, uh, let's see, what else? I haven't talked about the motor. Uh, as you can tell, the motor is actually a stressed part of the chassis. So if you kinda take a look back here, um, if you don't have a motor, all it hangs out is these arms this is the steering and then there's actually I think it's a torsion arm no it's not a torsion arm I forget wish I don't know some old school arm just a solid axle and then it pivots up here so having this solid was going to be really uh, critical to success on this um, this is all scrap yard leftovers kind of steel so um, I made this plate <laughs> out of it was actually a, a gooseneck hitch ball I bought from a friend of mine, like what goes down in a pickup truck. Uh, I gave $10 for this huge plate and I used a settling torch to cut it down. Um, this is eight inches tall, four inches wide angle, half inch wall. This kind of stuff is just like little uh, three quarter, 16 gauge, just kind of scrap stuff I had laying around. Um, so it's, it's more or less built from scrap. Um, the motor is a ball door. I believe it is a six kilowatt, 72 volt. Uh, I gave $120. I'm sorry, I gave $100. And I gave a friend of mine some money to go pick it up. Uh, he was visiting an area where this motor was and he, he, he went an hour out of his way or something for it. Uh, so it's just an old forklift motor, best I can tell. Uh, I, in a different configuration, was playing with it, and I ran 200 volts through a Soliton 1 and 1,000 amps. I think this might support that. Uh, it did big wheelies. There's another video of that. But the motor has been solid, so I don't have any problems there. Um, more of just your standard EV conversion stuff over here. So uh, I've linked the 14S. 7s so i got 21s and then it comes out this is the positive it goes to a contactor which is basically a huge 500 amp relay uh, the controller is capable of 400 amps so figure 80 volts 400 amps it's a more horsepower than this tractor originally had and it's nice too because it's a very low speed very torquey capable of running implements uh, it goes to here which is just a redundant switch this is just your standard boat or car battery switch i've been using as a secondary backup big huge fuse um these are running like two dollar chinese voltage uh voltmeters that i like uh, and i had a spare uh even at soliton auto position sensor that's not ideal uh, i really should have spent the money on the curtis one because this one reads too high of a starting resistance this one starts at like 1100 ohms and a curtis starts at zero the Curtis isn't smart enough to know that the base, and unless you have a programmer, which I haven't hired yet, um, it basically starts moving. That's a little frustrating at the moment. Uh, don't have an ammeter hooked up presently, but with this controller, I only am seeing like 150 amps uh, regularly. So that might also be a controller programming problem. Um, but yeah, this is so it goes through the fuse, goes into the controller, and then the ground. Uh, connects over that way. Uh, I reused as many of the like Nissan hybrid wires as I could. Uh, some instances I was able to splice them and use another uh, connector. Um, that way, kind of cut down on my cable cost. And these are also really high quality, like nickel plated, very nice fasteners. And I probably should show too. So the connectors that I'm using. These are uh, for the battery management system that are on the Nissans originally. Uh, they're a little threaded, it's like a seven millimeter headed. And I just use those as pickup points uh, in several spots. Uh, it was very convenient. 
Um, I'm not currently running a BMS, but such is life, you know. It seems to be working okay. I just every once in a while go through and check the cells, check the modules, and make sure everybody's in whack. Uh, other things, just general about a conversion. So this is a DC to DC converter, and then this is a small piece of a battery that I've cut off. So it's just four cells there. And what that does is it uh, kind of works like a, a you know 12 volt battery in a car, right? Just like a damper. So this takes the high voltage, knocks it down to 12 volts. So it's basically constantly charging this, and that seems to be effective so far. Um, so anything else, I think that generally covers it. So I haven't done anything else mechanically. I hadn't even put fluid in this thing. I had a swap meet $6 steering wheel. So I just welded that dude right on there. Um, other than that, no, there's not anything else I've really done. Uh, it has enough torque. It, it broke this pin the other day. So I've just half done that for the moment. Yeah, let's jump on here. Okay, kind of hard one-handed. Okay, so I wired the voltmeter to the contactor. That's my top, that's my bottom. This is my 12 volt. Uh, and then the motor is here. The throttle, I've used the factory Ford throttle. Just kind of, I don't know if I can show that, how I've done that certainly not optimal but definitely works i just press fit whoops press fit that in there and so yeah let's turn that down and i'm in neutral pto's on okay um and then to select a gear i usually just second for driving around the yard Anyways, uh, hopefully that's helpful to somebody out there. Um, just have been trying to teach myself EV conversions with this one. It has not been particularly easy. It's taken a couple months here, but I've enjoyed it and learned a lot. And hope I can share and give somebody else some knowledge.